Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome back to the Assembling of a Fleet series. Whether you're building a ship, you're destroying a ship, or you're even talking about tactics about ships, the Assembling of the Fleet series is here for you. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about assembling a utility ship. A utility ship, you're probably asking, what the hell is one of them? Well, a utility ship is a ship that can be used for a whole variety of different things. You could even say it's sort of Swiss army knife of ships. Now, whether you're mining, grinding, or welding, it's going to increase your survival capabilities, as well as speeding up the process and making it a little bit more exciting rather than using the boring old hand tools. Now, let's start building our utility ship. First off, before we consider any design, we need to consider what sort of resources we have at our disposal. Now, once we've done that, that means we can actually talk about the three sorts of designs that I think are quite acceptable to build in most situations. Now, first off, we have the individual ships. So we have a mining ship, you have a welding ship, and you have a grinding ship. Now, the disadvantage of this is that it's gonna take a lot longer to build each of the individual ships, and it's gonna use a lot more resources, but the positive is that if you've got a larger crew, it means you can do multiple tasks at once, as well as if one ship breaks down, it won't stop you from doing the other tasks. Now, if we move on to a ship that has multiple attachments, or it allows you to attach an attachment from a merge block, they are very functional ships. It means you can turn a welding or a utility ship even into a fighter by using the merge blocks as an attachment. But the problem is, is if that ship gets damaged or it gets destroyed, you're out of a job. You're not going to be able to do any of the tasks at all. Now, let's move on a little further. Let's start off with what I consider the most important ship, and that's, of course, the mining ship. Now, the mining ship is the most important out of all three I'm going to show you today due to one reason. It's the ship that is going to get you all the resources that's going to help you further on your survival. You can cope with the hand welder and the hand grinder, but the hand drill is absolute hell. Having to pick up each individual rock just doesn't work for too long. So once it comes to building your mining ship, this is what you need to take into consideration. First off is when you attach that drill, there's going to be a number of rotational inertia that you're going to have to deal with. And you can tell a good from a bad mining ship just by how much that ship is shaking all over the place. You really need to stabilize it. Otherwise, when you start to drill into an asteroid, your pattern's not going to be straight. You're not going to get straight to the resource you need. And you're also going to start whacking yourself against the side of the asteroid. And the problem is going to be there. It's going to cause a lot of unnecessary damage and even destroy your cockpit. Now you've got a floating ship within the asteroid and it's absolutely useless to you. So once you've got that built, you need to get your ore detector on the side. Whack your ore detector and you're good to go. Now, more importantly, we also need some sort of way of conveying our resources from the drills to our cargo container so we can actually stay out mining for some period of time. So I recommend doing a simple sort of cargo container within the hull, within the back, so it's a little bit protected because we don't want that getting destroyed and being hit off the side of the asteroid and all the rocks going everywhere because that just ends horribly. Now, moving on to the welding ship. Now, the welding ship is quite simple. All you have to do is add a few welders on the side. You need enough welders to make it efficient. So I tend to go with around four or five welders, and then I need a large cargo container on the back to store all the components that that welder's gonna need. Now, here's a useful tip. If you turn the welders on and then hop out of the ship and also help it grind with your hand grinder, you build it even faster. Now, finally, we have the grinder, and the same tip applies for the last one. Now, it needs to be a simple sort of functional ship, and there's not too much complication about this, but I see this ship as a really late game ship. You're not going to need it at the start unless you start at the crash site, purely due to you're not going to have much to grind away. And if you're making that many errors that you don't have to gr keep grinding something away, there's a problem going on. Now, in my opinion, utility ships are some of the most important ships in the game, even on a higher level than battle cruisers, fighters, and so on, because these are the ships that are going to lead you to that next level of ships. They're going to allow you to build bigger, stronger, and faster. But I'd like to thank you guys for watching today, and I'd love to hear your opinions on utility ships. Or would you add another sort of utility ship to this list of three? So I'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.